This video is sponsored by Fiverr, connecting you with the freelancers that you need to help you build your brand, including logo designers, copywriters, website developers, and much more. So hit that link in the description to check out my personally curated store for my recent recommendations of top Fiverr sellers. And now to the video. What's going on guys? Before we get into today's video, is anybody else still nursing some of their Halloween candy? It's been about two months now and we still got some of these, you know, Swedish berries, the other Swedish fish, like how they're all Swedish things. <laughs> Swedes make very good gummy candies. Are you a chocolate person? Do you still have some, some chocolates going on? Obviously I've eaten all the chocolates, basically just gummy candy and sour candy. So if you're a sour candy person, here, go and grab one to enjoy the video with. You can just grab through the video. Oh, there, excellent choice. Good job, audience. So in this week's video, we're gonna be talking about luxury cars and how to shoot luxury cars. Now, fun fact, I was in Germany uh, about two months ago now, maybe just a little over two months ago, and I tried to shoot this video called Behind the Scenes of Shooting Luxury Cars, and I had a friend who also shoots for like Mercedes-Benz and other like Ferrari and all these other dope companies. And he came and joined me and Mercedes even gave us like a 2020 GTC coupe, like this super dope car. And we went and drove around Munich and I, it just it just failed so bad. We had like super harsh light. We got kicked out of every single dope location. And then the only location that we had left before he had to leave to go on another shoot was just this like random parking lot forest area. So in this week's video, I'm gonna talk about the experience altogether of shooting luxury cars also including a few of those other little tips that we had in there. So tip number one when you're shooting luxury cars, how do you even get a freaking luxury car to go and shoot? So in situation number one, start with your friends and family. Maybe somebody in your network actually owns a really expensive car that you can go and shoot. You can be like, hey Jonathan, do you mind if I borrow your cool Lambo and go shoot some photos? Because Jonathan probably wants some cool photos of his Lambo. So start with your network first. If you don't have that, that's where you head over to websites like Craigslist and Auto Trader, and you start to message these people personally who are selling high-end luxury cars. You need to say, I wanna shoot some photos for your car so that when you sell it, you might even get some more money for your car if you say it like that. They're more likely to give you access access to that vehicle because it's a win-win situation. You're providing value for them and you're also getting some photos for your portfolio, which is super dope. And then the last thing is kind of like a long play and it's the route that I kind of took to build relationships with car companies like Volvo and Mercedes-Benz and Toyota and et cetera and other luxury car manufacturers. You usually have to reach out to a brand or an agency. I'll, look, I'll put a link to like an agency that usually like gets you chances to work with car companies. Usually you'll have to start off by shooting, let's say if it's Mercedes-Benz, one of the companies that they own is Smart Car. So you might have to reach out to Smart Car and start shooting some photos of Smart. And you have to crush those photos. Take some really dope photos of that because then they'll be like, well, hey, these smart photos are really nice. How about you shoot our C-Class? And then you're like, I would love to shoot the C-Class. And then you shoot dope photos of the C-Class. I don't know why I'm Southern now. And then after that, you work to E-Class. And then eventually maybe you're shooting the GTRs and the GTCs and the other, that the one, that the million dollar car. I, I would love to shoot that car, by the way. I'm gonna put that out in the world. Anyways, that's, that's not relevant, but you can work your way up to shooting those expensive cars. So that's tip number one. How do you get access to luxury sports cars to shoot? All right, so now you have your luxury car that you can go and shoot. The next step is to make sure it's clean, both on the outside and the inside. And I will be the first to tell you, this is like an uber pro tip. Most of the time when you have a luxury car, you'll go to a car wash and you'll be like, give me your most premium car wash for this expensive car. And it's gonna, it's gonna backfire so hard because in that situation, usually there's some sort of like wax material that they put in the water and then they'll like spray the car. And then when it dries, it has this wax material. And when you try to start buffing it out, all of a sudden these like scratch marks and screech marks, screech marks. There's just marks, it looks bad. And he actually did this in the situation with the Mercedes Benz. It had already been professionally clean and it was a little bit dirty. So I was like, let's bring it to the car wash. And then we cleaned it, get the bugs off of it because we were on the Autobahn going super fast. And when we got the bugs off of the car, it was just covered in wax and it looked horrible. And then we had to go, buy, no joke, literally we had to, we were in this one location and we had to go buy water to clean off the car. And the only place was this super bougie restaurant where we paid 10 euros for a 
bottle of water to clean this car and we got through half the car so we only shot one half of this Mercedes Benz. So don't ever put yourself in this situation because learn from me, don't do the expensive car wash, do a lower quality car wash and or have a professional cleaner on site who knows these things uh, to clean the car for you. Additionally, I would also recommend just getting a cleaning kit and giving a nice vacuum so that when you shoot the car, you don't have dust spots that you have to like take out in Photoshop afterwards. So definitely clean your car. It will save you time in post-production. It'll be less of a headache when you're actually taking the photos of the car, especially if it's for a client. The next area we're gonna cover is locations. This is like by far one of the hardest ones because when you're shooting with a car, not even a luxury car because luxury cars stand out even more so and people like to go, hey, is this your car? Tell me about this crazy expensive car. So it attracts a lot of attention so that when you're at a location, most likely security is gonna come and be like, hey, love the car, but get the frick out of here because you don't have permission to shoot here. What I would recommend is that you try to secure locations in advance, pay for the permits if you can because it will be less of a headache for you. You've done all this work to get this super dope car and now you're in this location, you wanna actually go and shoot it and have permission. So I did a shoot for Toyota last year and we shot on a friend's property like way up north in Canada. He gave us access to pretty much every area on the property and it was an off-road vehicle so we were able to like bring it on the snow and there was like three or four different shooting locations and it just looked amazing and there was absolutely no hassle because we had permission. Now, if you're just driving around and you wanna go shoot and you find a cool location, just be prepared to be very quick. So let's say you have to set up the car and you have to put in an area where probably a car shouldn't be. Just be quick, have a driver with you so that you can run outside, snap, 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 and when security comes and they say, hey, get out of here, you can say, that's no problem, sorry to interrupt, I was just taking a quick photo. So always respect security, try to secure locations up front, and just do a lot of research beforehand. A little pro tip, uh, try to match the surroundings with your car. So so let's take one of Noah's photos here, for example. He placed the 2020 GTC beside this building where it had all the lines and it's just like the colors matched it really nicely, the shapes matched it really nicely and it really felt like that car suited that location. All right, quick little break time for me. It's Noah's turn, he's gonna take over. P.S. Noah's work's amazing. Here's a little preface of his work before he starts talking. Check this, just check this stuff out. I'm gonna nibble on some chocolate. Hey friends, I'm Noah, I'm from Stuttgart. Yeah, you might like, here I'm from Germany so my English isn't that good. Uh, I'm driven down from Stuttgart today to Munich to meet up with Chris and to shoot like a beautiful AMG GTC 2020. So friends, finally after two hours of searching we have found a spot. It's not like the perfect spot around here but it's good enough to show you what I'm doing to get the perfect shot out of the location. What I'm going to do first is like a walk around the car. I'm shooting with a 24 70 mm f4. I have a macro function on this, so it's perfect to shoot little details like um, AMG logos, like the brakes. We have harsh light, this means the, the light is hitting the car directly. So what I'm using for, for shooting in harsh light is like a polarizer. So right now I'm going to show you how a picture looks like with a polarizer and without. So what I'm trying to do right now is trying to get the focus on the car. So I'm using like a foreground element. Now we have lights on of the car because the car looks always better when the lights are on. I'm gonna chat a little bit about gear because I know someone's out there being like, but what gear do I use, Chris? Tell me, I don't know who that is. But essentially what I like to use is I use an A7R 3 I like really high megapixel cameras so that if the car company that I'm shooting for wants to use it for like a billboard or I want to use it for print, at least they have the option to use it. I also like to use a 24 to 70 because I find anything wider than 24 millimeters gets too distorted and car companies usually go, but the nose of a car is not that big, please. And you're like, it's the lens. I tried to shoot it with the lens wide. And they're like, can you not do that, please? It looks distorted and weird. That's what I'm trying to tell you, is you should shoot with a 24 to 70, most versatile. If you want more of the background compressed, you can go with a longer lens. But generally, I shoot with a 24 to 70 always does a trick. Maybe F4 is like also good. You can use an F4, it doesn't always have to be 2.8 G Master. Dropping that coin, you can drop a little less coin and still get to shoot cool photos. Little caveat, because I know other people are gonna say it. I also use other lenses. I use prime lenses sometimes as well, but 
more or less, it's the 2470. Okay, the next point they're gonna be chatting about is the interiors. These car companies have spent so much money to make the outside of these cars look good. They spent just as much time and money to make the insides of the cars look just as good. And it's usually very overlooked in photography. You always are like, ooh, the outside's so fun. Let's place it here. But also shooting the interior is really fun and a little easier because you don't need some like super dope location. You just got some nice soft light to go and shoot with and the interiors will start looking good. So when shooting the interiors, I like to use lenses with really shallow depth of field to get the details. So let's say it's the stitching in the leather. We wanna really bring that out, show the fine craftsmanship of these vehicles. Sometimes I use the steering wheel to create like some foreground element in there. So you can get creative with your angles. Maybe shoot through the sunroof. I got some really cool photos of like what the car looks like shooting through the sunroof. So I just climb on top of the car. Be careful, they're very delicate and expensive vehicles. Also open up the doors, shoot along the doors so you get some nice shallow depth of field. Put some people in these photos and make sure to style them according to the car. Here's some examples from a Toyota shoot that we did. We had people who were like, had snowboards and we had some friends who looked like they would own this type of vehicle, be the models in our shot so they were stylized for winter and they look like they suited the vehicle nicely. Also a really like hot tip, this is like a pro tip if you've ever started shooting for car brands, make sure there's no copyright on the dash. So you can always have like music playing and it could be like, Shawn Mendes is playing this cool song with Camila Cabello. Are they dating? I think they're dating. I see all these Instagram photos of them date. Not relevant and I shouldn't know that information, but basically what I'm getting at is that you don't wanna show copywritten names or brands. Download some music beforehand that says, generic jazz song or something else. And make sure that music also might apply to the lifestyle of the vehicle. These are the small details that car companies look for when they are hiring professionals to shoot their cars. So please pay attention to these things. Also, last note about it, show the features of the car. Show maybe if they have a charging pad, show the charging pad. Show off the things that they've put time and energy into. So not only do you get nice photos, but they're applicable to also showing off the car's features, which is ultimately the goal of shooting for car companies. So what do cars do best? They drive. I know someone's gonna be like, Captain Obvious at 722, but what I'm trying to illustrate with this next point is that you wanna show these cars in motion. Don't always wanna have them parked in some cool location. Yes, those look good, but also show the cars in action. Here are some examples that I wanna show you that were taken on a close course with professional drivers. Now again, these are higher end cars, so it makes sense that that Mercedes-Benz GTR would be on a racetrack because it's basically a race car. So what I did is I got into a van, I safely strapped myself in, and I took some photos of the car moving. A little pro tip is if you wanna get some motion, try to match the shutter speed with your speed. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're going 40 miles an hour, do shutter one over 40. That way you'll get a beautiful like motion while you're shooting your car. And because your car isn't really moving that much, it will be nice and sharp, but everything around it will be really blurry. Additionally, you can also do this in Photoshop that if you mask out the car and then you add a linear blur around it, you can also make sure that it looks like it's going really fast. Here's a photographer. His name is Aaron Behal on Instagram. Here's a few examples of his work. He's really good at incorporating motion and movement into his photos. He also gets his camera really close to the action so let's say he's shooting a high-end car and there's dirt flying in it. His camera's like right in where all the dirt will be. So like that's a good way of adding motion and texture and depth to your image. So now that you have all these dope images of your luxury cars, you have to bring them into post and start editing them. My only tip here is like don't manipulate the color of the vehicle too much, especially if you're working with a client. They don't really want to see something where it's like, well, our car was blue and now it's yellow. So don't manipulate it too much. You want to stay true to the car manufacturer's colors that they've actually picked for that vehicle. Wow, the fan just went off and it got really quiet in here. I think my house knows that like an ad's coming up and they're like, shh. Let's talk about the ad. <laughs> Fiverr empowers our brands by connecting us with a global community of freelancers to help us build our businesses and brands, including logo designers, copywriters, website developers, voiceover artists, and even data entry specialists. If you're spending all this time taking photos and making videos like I do, there's a good chance that you're not spending it making a logo. So stop waiting. Hire some of the talented artists at Fiverr to help you make a dope logo instantly. Check out my curated store in the description below for my recommendations of top fiber sellers. Cool, so that's uh, that's shooting luxury cars. That's about it. I mean, there's definitely a lot more. I can go in more depth, but this is like an overview of shooting more higher end cars. I feel like I'm just rambling now. You're still here? That's really nice that you're still here. Ooh, I'll get you a beer.
Thanks for sticking around. Do you want, do you want a beer? Here, have a sip. There you go. Oh, nice. Is it good? Is it, oh, I know. I didn't keep it in the fridge too long. It's a little warm. Warm beer is always a little warm. But you know. <laughs> so, oh, okay, you know. You don't want it back. All right. <laughs> so on that note, if you guys liked this video and you enjoyed your warm beer, please press like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified for future videos because in some upcoming series, we're gonna be talking about post-production on some of these luxury car photos. So you don't wanna miss that. I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. It's, uh, it's nighttime. And I think I have to make dinner for Lizzie. Bye. This beer is so warm. Oh no.